fundamentally different about your election strategy in 2023 that differs radically from 2018? Well, a lot has changed. Um, first of all, I will start to uh, just indicate the fact that uh, uh, from the opponent's side, the against a weak and divided ZANU-PF, mm. uh, you are aware that Mr. Mnangagwa in 2018 had promised Zimbabweans that uh, he would open Zimbabwe for business and that he was good for business uh, and that he wanted to be given a chance and that he had repented and that he had seen the light. But uh, the past five years have indicated to the people of Zimbabwe that if anything, Mr. Mnangagwa has learned nothing, forgotten nothing, about the dictatorial tendencies and the tyranny that we have seen in this country. We have seen the erosion of uh, the frontiers of democracy. We have seen the uh, expansion and consolidation of contours of uh, uh, dictatorship and tyranny in this country. Uh, we have Mr. Scala, our MP, who is incarcerated, together with other uh, opposition figures, uh, students from the Zimbabwe National Students Union, who are behind bars as we speak on account of just expressing themselves yeah. and exercising their fundamental freedoms and rights. So uh, just from the opening side, we are fighting a weaker ZANU-PF, a divided ZANU-PF, a defeated ZANU-PF, and a losing ZANU-PF. But from our side, a lot has also changed. We have now a new outfit, um, which is the Citizens Coalition for Change, a citizen movement uh, that puts citizens at the center and citizens... Um, First, and I'm glad to say the movement is bigger, better, uh, and even stronger than we were in our past and uh, former years in the opposition. Okay. Well, some people listening are going to say you've recounted what your opponents are like and what they are doing right now with the country. And they will say, well, there's nothing new. The status quo remains in Zimbabwe, but perhaps... What could bring about change is what you have to offer. And again, I ask you the question, what is it that you are offering Zimbabweans, many of whom sit outside of your country, by the way, right now? Sorry, just come again. I think there's a bit of some network challenge there. Just okay. come again. Not All right. My, my, my simple question is this, that what is it that you are offering Zimbabweans in order to believe in your message, because part of the reason you were in South Africa was to encourage them to go back home so that they can vote and vote for your party so that you can bring about change. So what is it that you are offering them? Well, indeed, I mean, we have always been the face of hope. We have always been the face of change and the force of dignity in this country. Zimbabweans have lost everything. Zimbabweans have lost their dignity, their freedoms, their rights. They've lost even their sovereignty. Uh, you go into the region in South Africa, Malawi, Botswana, Zambia, in our neighboring countries, including even in, Zamb in Mozambique. Zimbabweans are people who have lost their pride. We need a restoration of that pride. We need a restoration of that dignity. And we are promising exactly that. And our agenda is premised on five critical deliverables. Number one, we need to be able to restore the dignity of Zimbabweans and their hope uh, and the pride of this great nation. We are a giant nation. We are a great nation and a great people with great resources and great attributes. We need to be able to locate that module as a people. Number two, we need to reconstruct our country. There has to be reconstruction, revival and refurbishment. Everything has just broken down. Infrastructure, uh, you go to even people's hopes, dreams, they're all broken. We need to pick up the pieces, mm -hmm. reconnect and reconstruct. Number three, transformation is fundamental. Our culture, the culture of our politics, the, the structure of our government, uh, issues to do with the way we relate with other countries within the region, on the continent and globally. We have mm -hmm. literally destroyed all our bridges. We need to make sure that we mend the bend down bridges and be able to reconnect with other nations, remove this pariah status, remove the banana republic status, so that we are going to be seen as a civilized member of the Commonwealth of Nations. Yeah. Number four, modernization is critical. And this is our agenda, to modernize this nation, to be able to bring uh, into modernity, modernize government, modernize 
the role of citizens, modernize the configuration of our institutions of the state. More fundamentally, making sure that we do not have institutions of the state that are captured, but that are responsible to the citizens. Last yeah. but not least is the issue of reconciliation. So that is our simple package to the people of Zimbabwe. And guess what, Colin? It has connected with the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That's why we have done very well in the by-elections. We formed the Triple C on the 24th of January. We went to the by-elections. We participated in 2022 in almost 20 by-elections. We won 19 out of them. We participated in almost 149 uh, ward elections. We won in 89 of them, meaning to say that we have connected with the expectations, the hopes and the aspirations of the people of Zimbabwe. And we are the next government in this country. Here's a simple question, Mr. Chamisa. How do you ensure that you deliver a victory that you are not cheated out of? And I'm deliberate about those last words because in 2018 you said the election was rigged. You claimed that you had won, but you were cheated out of it. How do you deliver a victory this time that you are not going to be cheated out of? Well, once beaten, twice shy. You know, you fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. We are very clear. We have learned our own things. Uh, and, of course, there are omissions and commissions that we uh, actually had a problem with in 2018. We have corrected some of them. The most fundamental thing for us at the moment is to make sure that all our polling stations are covered. We have about 12,000 polling stations. We will make sure that we cover every polling station with our polling agents so that we don't have returns that are not accounted for. In 2018, 544 polling stations were not covered. Uh, out of the about, about 11,600. Now we are not going to allow that. We leave no stone unturned. We'll make sure that we cover all polling stations. But beyond that, we also do not want to win with a narrow margin because that can actually be susceptible and vulnerable to changes and vagaries and vicissitudes of uh, uh, the dictatorship uh, shenanigans. We want to make sure that as we go into the election, we win big with a wide margin. So we are mobilizing the base. Out of the 6.6 .6 million voters, we must make sure that we win big and win big in an emphatic way. This is a year for citizen victory. And there's no way ZANU-PF is going to defeat, defeat us in an election, especially with Mr. Mnangagwa, who has failed in absolute terms. Corruption, mm -hmm. you know, you look at the economy, tanking, you look at 5 million Zimbabweans in the diaspora, you, you look at uh, human rights abuses, you look at the whole government itself so divided, the ruling party so divided, it tells you that the writing is on the wall. Well, Everything is pointing south. But, but here's the problem, Mr. Chamisa. And I'm glad you raised the issue of uh, election agents that were not deployed in, I think you said, over 500 polling stations. That was in 2018. Indeed. That, that, was, Indeed. that was an amateurish mistake, if you allow me to use that term, given what has happened in previous elections in Zimbabwe, where the opposition at that time, it was, it was Mr. Twangarai, who consistently said were being cheated out of elections. That was amateurish. But this time around, you have said that the people of Zimbabwe who are in the diaspora, that means who are outside of Zimbabwe, they must help fund those election agents of the Triple C in order that you have each one of them stationed at every polling station. Do you have the money for this campaign, Mr. Chamisa? Well, we do have the money, uh, Polly, and I must say that, uh, you know, it's very easy to criticize and point fingers the way you are because you don't understand mm -hmm. the environment we operate under. The fact that we actually managed to field the majority of our polling agents in different polling stations, even in 2018, is a source of celebration and acclaim. We must actually be uh, uh, applauded for that great job, other than, you know, uh, rather than you just pointing at our uh, so-called uh, amateurish. There's nothing uh, as difficult as fighting a dictatorship, using democratic means to fight in a, a, a dictatorial you know, establishment. Mm. Uh, so, yes, we, we, we acknowledge that we have gaps, but uh, like I said, you know, we learn every day. We have learned our lessons, and um, we are making sure that we uh, leave no room for any manipulation 
resources we've mobilized, we are mobilizing, and that's why, because it's a citizen effort, we are asking for citizens to make sure that they also give the fallback you know, uh, mechanism in various constituencies, in various wards, in various uh, polling stations. This is a people's fight. This is a citizen effort. Every citizen has a role, and every citizen must count. And this is why I've made that plea, not to say that we are not ready. We are ready. We are organized. We are mobilizing, and we'll make sure that uh, we don't allow the thief uh, to, again, uh, do what they know best, which is to steal and cheat. How big a percentage of Zimbabweans who live outside of Zimbabwe do you expect to come home and make sure that they make their voices heard in the ballot box? Well, we are talking about out of the five million, maybe a million, two million, uh, mainly those in the neighboring countries, particularly in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We hope that they'll be able to come back and, and vote uh, because some of them are already registered, but they've gone into other neighboring countries on account of uh, the economic situation. So, yes, we are really looking forward to them to come back home and vote. If they are not able to come back home and vote, particularly those who are far uh, away from Zimbabwe, they can mobilize and support their families to also uh, support the effort for change. Change is a requirement, change is a necessity, and change is non-negotiable in Zimbabwe. This is across the political divide, even in ZANU-PF. In fact, there is desire for change more in ZANU-PF than there is desire for change yeah. uh, in the opposition. It's a national demand. It's a national call us. Allow it's me, a national necessity. Allow me to ask this question. How big was the enthusiasm or perhaps the, the, the simplest form of the question is, was there even enthusiasm from Zimbabweans you spoke to who live in South Africa to say, we are going to come home and, and indeed vote and vote for a party we believe is going to change Zimbabwe? And perhaps as an addition to that, do you plan to go to other neighboring countries to rally those Zimbabweans there to say, come home and vote? Indeed, Tolly, the diaspora is a significant player. You know, you look at the remittances. Um, most of the uh, uh, Zimbabweans in the diaspora have really been uh, keeping our economy going, in fact, keeping the nation going, uh, over two billion, you know, support every year. Uh, that tells you that it's a huge and significant uh, contribution that is coming from the diaspora. But, you know, the biggest challenge has been the absence of a diaspora vote. You, you can't have, take, you know, taxation without representation or contribution without also a corresponding uh, avenue to give uh, citizens in the diaspora their right to express themselves. But be that as it may, we are duty-bound as an alternative to pave the way for the diasporans to also contribute significantly mm. to the change effort. And I will go to other countries. We will make sure that we continue to mobilize. We have not yet launched our campaign. We are going to launch very soon in the next few weeks. And once we have launched, we will then be able to uh, spread our wings onto other you know, capitals of the world where we have a significant population of Zimbabweans. In, in Zimbabwe, Mr. Chamisa, if we take this back to the 2000s, that's when the land question really began to take hold. And then the, the rest, as they say, is history. The taking over of commercial farms, with then, which then precipitated the sanctions. How would you deal with the land question if you became Zimbabwe's president post this election? I'm, I'm glad you are, you are very liberal with your language. It's not if, but when, because <laughs> this is a certainty. We are very clear, clearly that uh, there's going to be change in this country. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, even Mr. Mnangagwa is aware. ZANU-PF people know. That's why they are now in sixes and sevens. That's why now they are resorting to desperate tactics. Um, to try and undermine and weaken, uh, you know, the extent of their defeat. Uh, but I can tell you that the change is, is in the air, change is nigh. Uh, but, but of course, just to respond directly to your question, land is a critical component. I mean, there is no, there is no right uh, without right to land. You cannot speak of a nation or sovereignty or heritage without ownership of the land. Mm. The ownership of the land is the definition of our liberation, is the definition of our independence, is the definition of who we are. Land was at the core 
of the liberation struggle. It remains at the core of our being as a people. Apart from just talking about land as a right, and as an entitlement, as a heritage, we also look at land as a, an opportunity to uh, redefine and reconfirm the dignity of a people. So yes, beyond just the land redistribution, we need title to land. We are going to make sure that those who have occupied land, those who have been given land, are indeed given title to it, title deeds. As we speak, most of the people who have land, who have been allocated land, do not have title deeds, do not have title to that land. We need to make sure that we put a permanent uh, end to speculation and doubt as to the irreversibility of the land reform program. Beyond just the land reform, we need agrarian reform. So we are not going to reverse the land reform. It is a necessity. It is a national uh, necessity and a national program. All that right. must be consolidated, but we need to rationalize on the land that has been given so that we don't have people who have multiple land ownership. We also have to do a land audit to see who is where so that those who have land have land producing and we are able to have the benefit for our great country.